Hello, and thank you for viewing the MLX200 software overview video. In this video, we will first cover the layout of an MLX200 RS Logix project, where the UDTs and AOIs are located, and how to schedule an application task. Then, we will show a simple MLX200 example application and demonstrate how the instruction status bits can be used to control application flow. Finally, we will show how to control the application from the MLX200 HMI. This will show how to start and stop your application, as well as more advanced features such as holding and restarting. Okay, now we have the basic MLX200 RS Logix project file open. The first thing that we will do is expand the list of add-on instructions. These are the core components of the MLX200 application environment, and they can, they're used as the building blocks for developing MLX200 applications. They can be roughly divided into three categories. You have state management, instructions such as MLX abort and MLX enable. You have motion instructions such as move axis absolute and move linear absolute. And then you have configuration instructions such as set home offsets, set tool properties. For any of these instructions, if you double click on them and go to the help tab, you can see not only a extended description of what the instruction does at the top, but also documentation for each parameter inside the instruction. Now we're going to look at the controller tags, and there are two re relevant controller tags for users. The first is application data. Application data is where all of your teach point data, your tools, your user frames are stored. When using the MLX200 HMI, this data is automatically populated from the HMI, which means to back up your project and all application data, all you need to do is back up your RS Logix project file. Then under the MLX tag, tag you have uh, state and configuration information. For example, um, right here it tells you the current system state of the, the system. And if you go over to this description column, you can see a, a detailed documentation on what the different values for this variable mean. Under the robot tab, you can also get configuration feedback data for the robot itself. So here you can see the name of the robot, the number of axes, the max linear and max angular speed, and then for each axis of the robot, you can go under here and get uh, min and max travel limits for that axis, velocity for that axis, and then also feedback data for that axis. So you can get commanded position data, and then there's also a configurable data, which you can set to velocities or torques or following error or whatever you need to debug your program. And then finally, under the tasks on the controller organizer, we have the MLX HMI task. This is a uh, non-editable task that just handles the communication with the MLX 200 HMI. And then we have the main MLX task. This has a routine that is also non-editable that uh, communicate does the background communication between the PLC and the robot. And this is also where you schedule any application tasks that the user writes. So. We have a one simple applica example application scheduled right now, which we will discuss next. Before looking at the application code, we are going to look at the basic structure of a motion instruction. So what we see here is a MLX robot move axis absolute, and on the right you see several status bits. So we're going to talk about what each of these status bits means. The first one, EN, is, means enabled, and it is turned on any time that the latter conditions are true. The DN bit stands for done, and it tells the user that the parameters have been processed and the motion queued by the MLX200 control module. The IP in process bit just means that the motion is processing, but it is not active yet. The AC, the active bit, says that the robot is currently moving that to that teach point. And then the PC bit, which stands for process complete, says that the motion is completed. And there's also an ER bit, which just uh, tells if there's an error on the current motion. So an example ladder rung looks like this. This is not the only way to program an MLX, but it is one common way. So on the left, we have a little rung in condition that says only enable this rung when program step is equal to 10. Um, then we call our move axis absolute. We give it a unique control variable. This is where the status bit information will return in. We give it a target position. Here we go to job zero, teach point one. We give it our motion profile parameters. And then down at the bottom, we say, when the status complete bit turns on in that control variable, move to step 20. 
Now we're going to look at the example application code inside the RSLogix project. One thing to note here is that by default, the ladder editor will display all variable documentation inside the ladder, which can be difficult to read. One useful tip is to go up here to Tools, Options, and then under Ladder Editor Display, if we uncheck Show Main Operand Descriptions, then the ladder becomes a lot less cluttered and easier to read. So let's first go down to the main pro program description here. Uh, you can see this is very similar to what we just saw. The first thing just checks if the program step is equal to 10. If it is, it calls a move axis absolute, and when that move axis absolute is complete, it moves to step 20. And on step 20, we call two linear motions, and when the second motion is complete, we move back to step 10. So this will just create a loop between these two lines. One thing to note here is the multiple motion instructions can be placed in the same rung, and if you give them a non-zero blend factor, it will blend between the motions without stopping. Now at the, the top we have just a few simple rungs to initialize the system. The first rung checks the user program start bit. This is tied to the start button on the HMI and when it sees this bit it moves the 10 into the program step which starts the program. On the second rung it checks if the control module is disconnected or the system state of servers off ready. It resets the program step to zero. So this just resets the, the, the application logic. Now if we bring up the MLX200 HMI in a simulation of the robot, you can see the robot will start moving when I hit the start button. And here it is doing the two linear moves and then the PTP motion back to the initial position. And if we come over to the ladder, you will see that the instruction bits are updating in real time as the robot is moving. The other thing you can do from the HMI is you can control the state of the robot. So if I hit the abort button, you'll see the robot stop and you will see the state change to servos off aborted. You also notice that the available buttons change as the state changes. Only the buttons that are relevant for a particular state will show up. So here when I reset, it'll go back to servos off ready, allow me to re-enable the system and then restart the motion. Now additionally, I can press hold. This will stop the robot along its current path move it to held state, and then if I hit restart, the robot will start moving again. And finally, if the system aborts, and this could be from an e-stop e or just from pressing the abort button, I can hit reset and hold, which moves it to servers off held, and then I can enable and restart the motion along its current path. So this video has shown you how the RSLogix project file is laid out for MLUX200. It's shown you the basic program structure and how motion instructions work and then it's shown you how you can control those programs from the HMI. Thank you.